What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Okay, so today I have a very, very exciting video that was pretty much only planned maybe yesterday, day before that. Anyway, um, so before I get into the said exciting video, first of all, please give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, depending on whether you like this content or not. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you comment below um, if you have any video suggestions or you just want to know more about plants in general. Comment. Okay, anyway, now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> I have received a very exciting package in the mail this morning. There are cuttings of a wish list plant of mine that has been on my wish list for ever, pretty much since I first um, got into collecting indoor plants. Um, and a very lovely lady sent me some cuttings, which I'm very excited for. So yes, we're going to unbox this. Um, and then we're going to get into propagating via two ways. But we'll get into that in a second. Let's unbox this. Unbox? Unbox. Brain. Unbox. This beauty. I don't know whether you can actually see me doing this or not, but oh well, we'll get there. Um, yeah, so this lovely lady lives in Tasmania. Um, so this got here within like a day, which was cool. And now I don't know what I'm doing. How do you open it? <laughs> I'm just going for it. This is like taped up like you wouldn't believe, which is good. We like that. So it looks like it's in bubble wrap and it's got some newspaper shredding, shredding, shred. I don't know. What do you call it? Ooh, it's gonna make a mess. Do I care? No. So this is the little package. Let's open this beauty up carefully. These are very, very precious cuttings in here, guys. Got to make sure I don't chop anything yet, yet. Because said cuttings, I'm going to probably chop, chop and prop, as I like to say. Okay. Let's unwrap it. Ooh. Oh wow, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. <laughs> I have like anxiety like you wouldn't believe right now. Okay, I'm going to tilt the camera down quickly. Hang on. So that you guys can see what's going on here. <laughs> so it's come in plastic bag and wet paper towel, which is awesome. You guys can't even see because of the flipping sun. But that's okay. You get the gist of it. Ooh. Oh my gosh. I can literally cry. <laughs> guys. This is Monstera Dubia Cuttings. I can't say it. Dubia? Dubia? Oh my gosh. That is amazing. And look, here's another one. Oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. Ah! I literally can't even. Hey, we're back. Um, holy guacamole. Hang on. 
camera issues. Um, I literally can't believe I own this plant right now. <gasps> What's that? Okay, let me get more comfortable. And then we can chat. So, I managed to get my hands on some Monstera Juvia cuttings. I can't believe it. They're so beautiful. Oh my gosh, they're so delicate. I like, I can't, I can't even. I can't even. So, okay, well, let's just, let's, let's, okay, let's talk for a minute. I have done like a lot of research about propagating Monstera dubia. Um, and there's like conflicting ideas and suggestions when it comes to like what kind of propagating medium to use. Um, so basically there are like the three main methods of propagating. So one is water, which is like your pretty generalized um, thing. The second is sphagnum moss and the third is perlite. They're the... my stomach's telling me I'm hungry. The three main ways of propagating and I have, when I was researching how to propagate these guys, literally all three of those options came up with like do's and don'ts of them. I don't know. I know for a fact that I'm not going to be doing water, um, even though I used to do a lot of water propagating. Um, I just find that some of my cuttings would not do very well when I would transfer them from water to soil. Um, so yeah, that's not an option. So I've gone with two options, uh, moss and perlite. So this is what the video is about, okay? We are going to test out two methods of propagating Monstera dubia because I don't know which one's going to work. Um, so why not try both? I'm not overly a fan of moss just because, I said it a lot, just because. Um, I know that when it comes to putting your cu rooted cuttings into soil, it's hard to get all of the moss off of the roots. Um, and then like, you know, you risk damaging the roots and all that, but I, yes, I researched it and that's one main method that came up. And also the lady who gave me these cuttings, um, said that that's how she has been rooting them in the past as well. So we're going to try that. Both of them. So I have a new box, propagation box of wet perlite ready to go. I know, oh, I almost dropped it, <laughs> literally. Almost went everywhere. <sighs> Give me a moment. That would have been a disaster. Okay, um, I know it's massive, so I'm probably going to find some other things to chop up and put in here as well. And then I have just a little tub of wet or damp sphagnum moss. Um, yeah, I didn't want to go too crazy with it because, again, I'm not overly a fan of moss. So, that's what we're going to do. And then I'm going to decide how many of these to take cuttings from to put into said boxes. I think this one I'm definitely, like, keeping as is because, like, isn't that beautiful? So stunning. Um, yeah, so that's going to stay as is. I think, I think I'm going to pop this one into the perlite. Oh, it's making me nervous. Okay. Normally, I'm like totally okay with propagating and like, I don't even give it a second thought. I just chop and chuck it in the prop boxes. But with things like this, it's like, oh, 
what if it does, you guys? What if it dies? Anyway, I need to clear some space. We need some space. Um, righto. So we know for a fact this one is going to go into the perlite. So I am going to do that now. <laughs> and slowly die inside. Oh, which one do I want? Think. Yeah. So I'm going to put this node and aerial root there into <clears throat> excuse me, the perlite. And then probably this second one as well. So that's got an aerial root and node there too. So just those two. Because we want it to eventually like trail upwards. Right? Right? So let's do it. Going in. Don't die on me. Please don't. No, that's not gonna work. Hang on. Go on the side. Okay, I didn't get the other one. Okay. One. Right, here's the ultimate test. What goes into sphagnum? What goes into perlite of this baby? Oh, it's so beautiful. Okay, well, that's the tip. If you can see that right there, that's a tip leaf. So we'll make a tip cutting, which I think I want the tip cutting to go in perlite too. Um, okay. Why am I so nervous about this? I don't understand. Let's do it. So I'm probably going to do, hang on, where are all the roots? That's a good one. That's not quite. So how many do I want in sphagnum? two right let's do two of each two in perlite two in sphagnum all right okay <laughs> good talk okay so i'm gonna chop under this one here very carefully ah! all right i'll let that color over for a second let's get this one um so hang on, now I need to remember where's the tip and where is the, not tip, there. And then we're going to do this one, which will go in the sphagnum, that way. And you will go that way. Where am I need to chop up that? I don't know. I'm probably going to change my mind eventually. <laughs> yeah. We'll do that. Okay. Two in there, two in there. Um, I'm going to move you over a bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. <gasps> so, I have that, the large jibia cutting sitting in the corner here. Um, so, I'm going to pop the other one also there stressful I don't like it at all so we're gonna go in like that making sure that the aerial 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 roots are covered in perlite because that's how they're gonna root get that away from said leaves okay that's that one so that is the perlite can you guys see that that's the perlite one done now the moss. I just leave it like that. <laughs> I know I can't. Um, so from research, I need to like dig the cuttings in, and 
as well as I can. Dig him in. Or bury them, either or. Into the moss. So I'm going to do the bottom two. It's really hard to bury them in said moss. It didn't work. Okay, where do you want to go then? You tell me. Ah! I'm gonna go over here. Okay, it's not sticking. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that one. We'll see how it goes. This one though, we can bury inwards into the moss. I'm just trying to make sure that I get like the aerial roots covered in the moss because that's obviously where the roots are gonna grow. Um, so yeah. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that because this guy's not working for me. <sighs> but I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. That one, there's one right down there that's 100% buried. So hopefully it'll root from there. Hopefully. Um, okay, so lids. This one is dirty, but who cares? So I've got lids with holes in them. So this... This one never shuts. Um, both of these are actually going to go under my grow light, so I'll take you over there shortly to show you where they're going. Um, but for now, I probably need to put some other things in here. Do I? Yeah, why not? Anyway, I'm going to go find some more cuttings to put in this guy. I'll be back. Okay, so you can't see it very well, clearly, like, because of the light happening. But this is the situation of my grow light area, which I have now decided I need to get another grow light because I have too many propagation boxes. Anyway, um, so yeah, I need to... Rearrange it so I can fit my prop boxes with the Monstera Drubias in them. And hopefully they take. Um, I think this guy, which mainly just has like soil propagations in there that can go up the very top with my other box and oh that's so dusty but we're going to ignore that for now um we'll pop the dubias here so just quickly this one the big perlite one um I put some, gosh, you're not going to be able to see, uh, paper calyx, Hoya paper calyx cuttings and some um, Hoya australis cuttings in there too. Just because they're super easy to propagate. And why not? So this ow, guy is going to go here. Will you fit? Yes, you'll fit. Done. And then... The sphagnum jubia cuttings will just have to go up the front here and hopefully live their best life. Hopefully. Um, I'm just going to chuck some things around it. I'm trying to get my Thai constellation to grow. 
bigger and quicker. So far, that is the only leaf it's given me. But it's beautiful, don't get me wrong. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> but at this point, oh, I think I need some water. He ain't doing too well. Um, I'm no, I'm gonna leave it like that. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. So that's basically it for this vlog. Um. I'm going to do a propagation update in a couple of weeks. So obviously I'm going to give these guys a couple of weeks to kind of see what happens. I'll check them in a few days to a week's time just to make sure that, you know, they're not completely hating life. Um, and, you know, if I need to make any changes, I'll make sure I document that so I can let you know in the propagation update. So, yeah, that'll mainly be for the experiment that I did here today with the perlite and the sphagnum moss. Um, but I'll may as well just give you an update on all of my other propagations too. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys have any, like, suggestions... Or ideas in regards to propagating Monstera dubia, 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 however you pronounce it, um, please let me know in the comments um, below. I would really, really appreciate that. Um, let me know about your experiences with propagating them as well, whether you had good or bad experiences. Either way, I'd like to know because this is my first time propagating said plant. <laughs> And I hope it goes well. Um, yeah. Anyway, again, please like and subscribe. Um, have a fantastic couple of weeks. And I will see you in the next propagation update. Bye. <laughs>